Hello, welcome to another film and dryer testing video, the third one on this week. This is the Fix Dry model NT1, and this box is sent to me by the Fix Dry in exchange for the review. Now, on this picture, I can see quite a lot of similarities with the film and dryer already tested on this channel, but um, let's see the specifications and then we will take a closer look. This dryer is able to dry two spools at once. The maximum temperature is 70 degrees Celsius and it has a 110 watt PTC heater, built-in fan, even drying, and even has built-in humidity detector. I just noticed this on the box, low working noise. Is it possible that we will have a quiet filament dryer? <laughs> Let's see. Just very shortly, why do we need a filament dryer? Well, filaments will absorb moisture from the air and depend where you live, but this may have a negative effect to the print quality. Some filaments are more sensitive to this, like PTG, TPU, nylon, but even PLA or ABS we can improve the print quality if you use the filament dryer. Let's see what's in the box. And this was content of the package, so we have the base with the heater, the power cable which is permanently plugged and it is 1.7 meters long, and we have this cover with some exit for the filaments. Not even user manual included here, but this is very simple product, so probably we don't even need it. In the base I can see the heater and there are some rollers for the filament. And I can see probably this is the humidity sensor and maybe somewhere inside is the temperature sensor too. I also noticed that this cover is a little bit tight and it's a little bit hard to place it on. Now it's on, but at least it has good sealing around it, only it's a little bit harder now to remove it. We don't even have some kind of handle or something like that. There is a ventilation hole on the top and we have quite a lot of exit for the filaments. On each side we have two and on top we have three. Probably the middle one is if you are using some bigger spool and then you can choose any of these. I'm sorry, but I really have to check something because the similarity was so big that I thought that uh, this is one of the rare brand of each other. But uh, now I can see that there are some differences. Even the screen is different, the spool holders or rollers. And this one here it has the humidity sensor until this one here separate and it used the uh, own battery. So these are completely different products and uh, I think this should be much quieter. Well, maybe there is seems some kind of similarity because I noticed this only now when I'm collecting some data from their website. Let me show you. Currently I'm on a fixed dry website and we have this image, comparison of six filament dryers, the temperature and relative humidity. And I'm 100% sure that this graph is from my video. And here you can see it is open for 30 minute measuring, for 60 me minute measuring. It's fine, only I would like to see attribution that it is uh, from mytechfan.com website. And also the second problem with this is that this is not the fixed dry, but the six filament dryer here was the IBOS. And this is that video, as you can see the six filament dryer is the IBOS. Yes, they have very similar heaters, but even then this is not the same uh, filament dryer. And let me jump to the results. So this is that graph, this is the temperature. And this is the relative humidity. Now I have only two small problems with this. Uh, first of all, it is not the fixed dry which I tested there, but the IBOS. And the second one, if they are using my data, that is completely fine, but I would expect some kind of attribution there. So back to our fixed dry NT1. This is how it works. Very similar to the food dehydrator. There is the heater and properly below it is the fan and it sucks the air here. And it is very important that you never cover this hose on the top because here we have the exit of the hot air. Now what I don't really like with this solution that we will have very uneven drying. Imagine if your spool is here, it will get very hot air only from the bottom and only from the one side. Of course you can always have the option to place the spool in the middle. In that case the air will go around it, but uh, even then it would be good to have some kind of option to rotate the spool during the drying. Of course during the printing it will rotate because it's unrolling, but uh, during the drying it would be good to have this uh, rotation possibility or what I do every half hour just rotate it, maybe quarter of the rotation and that's it. I also noticed that we cannot have any smaller diameter spool because look how close it is to these heaters. 
Maybe the distance between these two rollers should be a little bit smaller, but it's not adjustable. The distance between these rollers is 150 millimeters approximately, but usually it is between 110 and 120 millimeters. In the meantime, I'll figure out so bigger distance between these rollers is important if we want to drive bigger spool, three kilograms or something like that. It is time for my regular sponge test, but I noticed that I need a longer plate because this one, which I regularly using in this kind of videos, is too short. I found a longer one. This I prepared for my washer test. You will see that video soon, but this is perfect now. And this will be the position of the sponge. It's time to give it the power and to see the screen. Ah, yes, very important. Let's see how it operates. Mm -hmm. So here we can see the current temperature and humidity. This is probably the countdown time. And now it's flickering. I can here set the temperature. And the maximum is 70 degrees Celsius. And now this one is flickering and here I can set the countdown time. Let's say two hours. Ah, even the minutes I can change. And now it's operating. I also notice when I turn it off, it doesn't turn off the fan immediately, maybe only after one minute. But this is normal protection from the overheating. This is the position of the DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor. It is quite close to the wall, so I'm not sure it really deformed the temperature measurements. If you didn't saw my earlier similar videos, my regular sponge test, I have this sponge for the cleaning of the soldering tip iron. And I'm adding exactly two milliliters of water and I'm placing inside and I will measure the weight after half hours and after one hour. And from this I can calculate how much it dries the sponge. Not exactly comparable with the drying of the filament, but at least this data I can compare with other filament dryers. The data from this sensor I will collect with Arduino Uno and my computer, but also on this display I can see the current temperature and relative humidity. Weight of dry sponge is 0 0.668 grams. I will add exactly 2 milliliters of water, but I measure the weight, it is more precise. Two point six eight seven. Set temperature is seventy degrees Celsius and current humidity is forty four percent. Two hours should be enough. As you can see, sensor is completely next to the wall, and this is the position of the sponge. After 5 minutes, the temperature inside is 54 degrees Celsius and 35% relative humidity, according to their sensors. According to mine, uh, 41 degrees Celsius and 26% uh, relative humidity. Soon it will be open for half hours measuring, and according to their sensors, the temperature inside is 68 degrees Celsius and 24% relative humidity. According to my sensors, uh, 54 degrees Celsius and 70% uh, relative humidity. But of course, the sensors are on different location. The hardest part in this measuring will be removing this cover. According to its own sensor, it reached the 70 degrees Celsius and I heard a few click sounds and I'm not quite sure, but it sounds like they are using some kind of mechanical relay but I will check later on the lower temperatures. Now let's measure the noise from exactly half meter distance. Approximately 43 decibels, which is not really quiet for the filament dryer. <laughs> Maybe I was expecting too much, but uh, this symbol confused me. After 45 minutes, approximately 70 degrees Celsius inside, 21% relative humidity. According to my sensor, 54 degrees Celsius and 15% relative humidity. And I don't think that the temperature will go higher because it's stabilized on this temperature. But let's try to measure the temperature of the hot air. I have to be careful with the sponge. 
Wow, it looks like down there the temperature of the hot air variates, uh, even 97 degrees Celsius, which may be too much for some spools. Soon it will be one hour measuring and pay attention how warped is this sponge and this is because it gets much stronger drying from the left side. And it's time for the last measuring and I will even turn off the dryer. It will stop with the fan after one minute. Yes, definitely it is completely dry. 0.645, this means a little bit lighter than the start weight and this is because it had some moisture before this testing. Completely dry. In the meantime we turn off the fan and I will collect the cooling data, maybe 10 more minutes. Ok, it is time to save this data, but I have two more very important experiments. Pay attention to the position of the sensor. It is exactly above that hole where the hot air goes in. And I'm very curious, if I set here the 50 degrees Celsius temperature, let's say I want to dry PLA, if the temperature of the hot air will be reduced, which would be the correct method, or it will be still above 90 degrees Celsius, only it will be turned on and off more frequently, which is not the correct method. And I will clear the output and I'm collecting again the new data. According to their sensor, 48 degrees Celsius, according to mine, uh, 73 degrees Celsius is the temperature of the hot air, which is too much, not only for PLA, but also for PETG. I'm curious what will be the peak temperature. It reached 50 degrees Celsius, then I heard a click sound, so properly it turned off the heater, and the peak was 76 degrees Celsius. I want to show you that click sound, I would... oops. Approximately every two minutes and probably we can see this on the graph too. And my last test, I will insert this pool maybe five minutes and then I will check with the thermal camera how equal or even is the temperature on different sides. This side will be up. Even now the set temperature is 50 degrees Celsius, but I move the sensor, it is in upper position, but even here it shows it is 65 degrees Celsius. Ok, now let's analyze the temperatures on the surface of this pool. Now let's analyze the temperatures and I lock the scales so we can compare different sides. This was the bottom side and this was the top side. And even here I can see the differences, so here it was closer to that hot air compared to this side. And just one more demonstration, this is honeycomb grid for the laser engraving, and uh, through the thermal camera we can see the difference between the temperatures, of course the hottest air is in the middle. Now I noticed on their website this element, but this was not included in my kit, but it really makes sense. It will protect the spool from the direct heat and the heating or drying will be more equal. It can be also still printed but maybe from nylon because even for the ABS this temperature may be too much. And also I can see that this roller looks differently on my unit. I think these are bigger to have more space between the filament and the base because we need space for this new part. Now the correct solution will be to send this new pass to all the existing customers. I mean, these rollers are very easily replaceable by the user. Here you can see a few seconds of the footage. Now, I couldn't remove easily those bearings, so I think the most correct solution would be to send those new rollers together with the bearings. I will ask for new parts and I will keep you updated. If I got them, I will maybe add the post or maybe change the description or add something in the first comment. Without this shield, uh, this dryer can be used only with the nylon maybe, because uh, that hot air will deform almost any other filament. And now let's analyze the numbers in function of time. This is the temperature and the maximum was 56 degrees Celsius. Here it was open for 30 minute measuring. And interesting, we can see some temperature increase here. <laughs> this is because I didn't place back the cover to original position, but the sensor was closer to hot air. And when I continue with the measuring, then we can see these waves uh, turning on and off the heater every maybe two minutes. And here it was the one hour measuring and turn off and this is some cooling. 
with a relative humidity. Here it was open for 30 minutes measuring. I let out some moisture, but this was very minimal. So this is very dry anyway. So this is very strong filament dryer. This is measuring the hot air when the sensor was exactly above that uh, hole where the hot air goes in. And actually here only the temperature is important. Uh, the value was set to 50 degrees Celsius. This is important. Let's say we want to dry the PLA. And this was the temperature of the hot air. The peak was 76 degrees Celsius. This is too much even for PETG. And after this, uh, it reached that 50 degrees Celsius according to its own sensor. And then it started with that uh, two minutes turning on and off the heater. And basically, it stabilized around 70 degrees Celsius. And here, the heater was turned off. And this is the result of the sponge drying test. Uh, uh, after one hour, it was completely dry. But even this is very good value. I think it is in the top five or something like that. So this is very strong filament dryer but it has some disadvantages as i mentioned now some conclusions for the end this is very strong filament dryer no question about that but as it is now maybe even too powerful the spool is very close to that very hot air and this may be too much for most of the filaments but even for some spools now there is a solution i can see on their website but the real question is how will they handle the existing customers the correct solution would be to send these parts to the user or they can offer some coupon or discount and if the user will DIY the solution itself but they can provide then STR files don't forget if you want to print these parts use nylon because it is very temperature resistant material a bamboo lab can be a great example to most of the companies how they handle that A1 and bed heating cable problem otherwise this can be great uh, filament dryer in that new version it can handle even 3 kg spools so this is very rare with the filament dryers if you have some other experience with it, write me a few lines down in the comment section. That would be it. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.